be continuing that um, procedure thing that we needed to do for the block states. I'm just going to basically provide the code that I've already coded in and you can alterate it to how you want it. I'm going to just walk you through how everything works and what everything does and explain it to the best I, as I can because it is quite a bit of code and it can be overwhelming. So um, first thing what we need to do is actually create a new procedure. So what we want to do is go procedure um, prop block uh, up. And then what we want to do is create a new procedure. And I have the procedure on my desktop here, so I'm just going to be importing it. Going to home and that. All right, so it's pretty much set up. Uh, just a few things that we need to do in order to make it actually work. Now, when we were setting up the blocks, we were we enabled the uh, entity NBT. So we're going to be using NBT for the actual um, synchronizing the randomizer. So basically what this is doing right here are setting two different types of variables. Um, the first one is random update no farmland. So this is going to be testing for this specific farmland. It's going to be testing at a random interval. So basically what I've done is I've just put a randomizer to the uh, value so it's going to continue to check for it um, that number will automatically change same with this one this is random grow up uh, update grow so this is going to basically grow the crop randomly too so you're probably wondering okay well what's all those things right good question um, Basically what we're doing right now is we're testing for different block states. If you need to add a new block state, say you have more, then you can just add an if else statement and just copy the, I would say like the middle code and just shift things down. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced stuff, but um, it's you're probably fine to just use uh, four block states for your mod um, if you don't want to go into whole alterating and everything like that. So the first thing we need to do is actually test for a block state. So I'm going to be selecting our first seed one, our second seed one, and our third seed, and finally our fourth stage. So now that you have all that in, uh, we can start exploring the code, how it's all set up. Uh, to do that, you can just go and right click on the element here and go expand block. And as you can see, there is some interesting stuff here. So this is basically just testing for what block it is. It's pretty straightforward. We've done that kind of testing before. Uh, this is testing for either wet or dry farmland. And if it's not, then it's basically removing the block. So not the farmland it's not removing it's actually removing the the crop itself so it's also dropping the item that it has so we're going to be utilizing the drops that um we set it to it's a little bit complicated but it'll make sense later so if we expand this uh there's some more stuff that we need to actually fill out uh, this is the growth section. So this is basically testing this section here if the there is cropland. And if so, then what we want to do is update it. But it's testing for a couple conditions uh, first before it can do that. Um, is day in provided world? If it's day, then it's going to run these series of pro um, procedures. It's also going to test to see if the, the light level is greater than 10. So this is during the day. So if it's greater or equal than 10, then it's going to basically check to see what the variable 
for the update grow tick. So this one right here, it's a random event. So every cycle it goes through the update tick for the block, what's happening is it's generating a new number. So when that new number comes around, if it's less than or equal than 0 0.005, then it will update this block. Basically the same thing, only we're not testing for day, we're testing for night by using a not statement. And it needs to be uh, greater than 10 for the light level, and it's pretty much the same thing, it's just different. So what we're doing here, what we need to do at least, is update our stage to the second stage. So we're going to do that. And we can actually collapse all that now. And all that's good. So the next stage that we need to do is work on the second stage. So we're going to expand that. And you're going to have a couple of different options as well. Uh, pretty much the same thing as the first one. So we're going to expand this. And again, it's exactly the same thing. It's just copied. And what we need to do is update the stage to the third stage for the second stage. So we're on our second stage here. We're updating the placement for the third stage. And then we're going to collapse that. We're just going to make sure that everything is here, and obviously it isn't. So how this is working is um, if the block is, if there's no farmland on the block, what we're doing is we're creating a custom drop property. So how this is set up is the priority, um, the randomizer is going to be testing if it's uh, equal or less than 25 or 0 0.25, then it's going to drop three seeds. If it's greater than 0 0.25, not equal or greater, just e or just greater than 0 0.25, which means it's going to be the one fraction more than this number here. So it's going to only spawn two. So this basically has it. So it's going to spawn more likely only two seeds rather than one seed. So that's basically how that works. If you have the, um, what do you call it? The um, block to actually drop seeds, then what you want to do is, well, you don't need to do anything, but it will be also dropping the, the drop for the block. So we need to actually configure the block a little bit, but we need to configure it to drop all our seeds so we're just going to select all these to be seeds our own seeds and that one and that's all we need to do for that so we're just going to collapse that and the second stage is done and it's pretty much the same for all the other ones. We need to make sure that this is updated to the final stage. So like so. And we can now collapse that. And we can expand this one. Oops. And what we want to do is update all our seeds again. And this is for the third stage. So when we get this done, we can finally work on the fourth stage. Now for the procedure, this is basically just, um, or the variable, it's testing for the um, random update uh, number for no farmland. Now what's this, why it's doing all this simultaneously as it's using the variable is it's synchronizing that same variable up here throughout the whole procedure. So it makes sure that it's checking for that same number over and over and over again for all the different variable um, things that are getting taken. So that will make it so it's um, synchronized and that crops don't, 
it just it's properly coded that way from what I can understand um, like trying to figure it out I noticed that it was less buggy doing it this way to synchronize it through variables than trying to add random isers all the way through because then each randomizer would be a different number and it's not synchronized so it's more sync with the rest of the crops this way so that's good uh, we can collapse oh hold on we have if else and what we want to do greater than less than So we're just going to select, select this one to be crop or seeds and then we're good. So we're just going to collapse that and then we're going to collapse that and then we're going to open this one. And this one's a little bit different. Uh, this is just a dropping property. Uh, there is no block update because it's our last stage here. So what we need to do is we need to update majority of these to be seeds of our own but there's a little twist to it uh, we need the last one right here to drop our crops no we don't we just need to update all the seeds never mind because we're gonna configure it to drop our crops on this one So we're just going to update all of these seeds. And once this is all, so once you're finished that, you can collapse this one right here. And then that will collapse it there. And then you can collapse the if statement. And then it's all nice and neat again. Um, for the variable, you don't need to worry about local variables or anything like that this is all stored within the block itself so you don't need to worry about working with variables or anything like that uh, as long as the um, inventory is enabled and you've set it up the way that we've done it in the previous tutorials and it should be fine so we're just going to click next and now we need to actually update the blocks so we're going to go into each individual block make sure that this is set up properly and seeds we got that so that's fine we can walk through it and we have this enabled this is important for the MBT data to actually work properly we've set the inventory to zero so that's good we're just going to select our update tick for our update tick here and we're going to click next and next and we're going to do that for each stage so this is 100 that's right we actually need to go back in here and set this to 100 okay so that's good we can drop seeds that's good there update tick we're going to select our update tick here this is for the second stage and we're going to follow the same with this one so that's good that's good and our update tick and the last one wheat or whatever we're growing and good and then finally we're just going to go with our update tick again and that's all we needed to do for the update tick it was pretty straightforward um, if you have any questions uh, you can ask them on my forums or in the comments um, if it's more like a longer question then try to post it on my forums instead because it's easier for me to keep track of things like that on my forums compared to the comments but if it's just like a single question or whatever, then it's fine to post in the comment section. Um, as far as the procedure, it is quite complex, like I said. And I think the easiest way to actually provide um, 
the thing is just for through a download and then you guys can update it how you wish um, that it's pretty complex but it makes sense when you actually go through it the um, each one of these stages basically tests for what block is currently in that space and if it's true for say the second stage then it's going to only go to this procedure but we're basically uh, testing for each individual block before we even run the procedure and this just limits the amount of procedures we need to only one and it makes it a lot more easier and straight across the board for uh, variables and all that stuff so um, like I said just make sure you follow the steps um, update your your blocks uh, in the spaces just expand them and then expand these and then update your blocks and it's best to keep it organized so unexpand them or collapse them and then just update everything in here to what your mod um, elements are and you should be good to go um, other than that uh, if you need help or anything like that you can post on my forms under the help, uh, help section for amp creator or ask someone on the amp creator forms themselves uh, for uh, some help with the mod but uh, other than that I uh, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial I will provide the download link for the custom crop procedure uh, for the update tick in the description so you guys well it'll be a link to a um, a page so you can download it along with the other procedures that you you can grab like the seeds and stuff like that but anyhow, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.